the current state of gacha games is a very interesting one right now right people's attention is very much divided between all the gacha games that are currently in uh, motion right now and you know depending on who you ask that could be a good thing that could be a bad thing or actually no i think most people would say that's a good thing some people would say that's a bad thing right and it's very interesting because all the got with the release of all these new gacha games it's really shown a light on what is wrong with some of the gacha games genshin impact especially because i remember bro i remember there was a time when genshin impact was the only quote-unquote triple a gacha game and um you know people were always saying Genshin impact is so good against this this catches that get back can do no wrong and you know if you said and if you said anything otherwise then you were essentially the bastard child of of hitler and fucking cardi b you know it was it was a very very weird time but uh, you know things have slowly changed and people are really starting to see that you know that a lot of these games are flawed in their own ways and um you know it, there's nothing wrong with pointing that out you know what i mean with you know you know with like even like um let's look at the games right now right you have honkai star rail right i'm gonna be honest there really hasn't been that much hype for honkai star rail since um 2.2 uh i mean i say that but like literally like 30 seconds ago there was a sunday drip marketing and the new tingyun five star drip marketing and that really that really has uh has made waves on the online space people are really excited for uh 2.7 myself included i think 2.7 is gonna be pretty good uh with uh i think 2.7 is actually going to be massive with uh sunday and ting um but you know the point still stands most people you know most of the gacha games no one's really talking about you know genshin impact i have i have not seen anybody talk about genshin impact that much since uh especially now that we're in the the biggest cycle of genshin impact usually is that is like the 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 patch cycles because that's the main R, that's the main story quest uh, updates. Those are like the Archon quests. That's like usually the biggest patches of the game. Uh, actually, no, the biggest patch is probably like when the Archon releases. That's probably the biggest patch. Uh, but the point of success, nobody's really talking about it, but it still gets views. I'm not gonna lie, just because nobody's talking about it doesn't really doesn't get views. I remember, I think I think I saw you know Zyox release a video for uh, Shilolan. That that thing got like 250k views in one day. So like it still gets views, Genshin Impact still gets views, but like it's not as um it's not as lucrative as it was back before Hongai Sorrow came out. You know what I mean? Back before there were other options, right? And you know, this by and large is not limited to, you know, Wuthering Waves, right? With the release of the gotcha revenue, Wuthering Waves uh was or actually like with the release of the gotcha revenue, you know, um, which by the way was, you know it was inaccurate you know shocker there since central tower is at this point <laughs> central tower should not really be trusted but that's 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 a here neither here nor there but the point is it's still a good frame of reference uh but the point is that with the last gotcha revenue weather waves didn't make as much money as people were, as people expected which is surprising to me i don't know why people thought again well weather waves would make that much money in uh that in the last patch purely because they released a premium five-star character so shocking to me that like people were shocked that it didn't make that much money they gave away a free unit but because of that there are ramblings of people talking about oh well then waves is dead well then waves is this well then waves that you know and you know i've had this thought i've had this thought rattling in my head for like the last week uh and i think genuinely i believe i genuinely believe that like weathering waves I do think it has the most potential of all the gacha games. I really do. I do think that the 2.0 uh, update for Wuthering Waves will be the patch that will really like skyrocket the game if if it's done well, right? If if the game is handled well uh, up until 2.0, and then 2.0 is just a fucking massive patch, which I have full faith in Curl Games. They don't. Really, they've never given. They haven't really given me a reason to doubt them. So I don't, uh, I don't, I, I, I have full faith in Curl Games. I do think that will be the case in 2.0. Um, but yeah, 2.0 will, I do think 2.0 will really like put eyes on the uh, Wuthering Waves, almost like Genshin, will really put eyes on Wuthering Waves and really like set, like skyrocket the game uh, in the future. And the reason why I say this is because there are a few things that uh, Wuthering Waves the thing that Wuthering Waves, I do believe, does 
things that the other games that the other gotcha games don't or has or has the potential for things that the other gotcha games don't right and the first thing the fr the biggest thing the elephant in the room the biggest thing that i think Wilder waves has the most uh potential for number one is the skin game i i don't know why Hoyaverse they don't well, actually know i know why Hoyaverse doesn't release skins because the last time they released skins someone tried to fucking kill the way so <laughs> i guess i guess uh the way doesn't want to doesn't want to trigger his ptsd but um it's honestly very shocking to me especially with zenless zone zero i think zenless zone zero like the zenless zone zero with the amount of sex appeal that game has it's it's i do think it's just a massive l that they're not really that they're not releasing skins already but Crow games has the most potential because the skins be, because of the skin game i do think Girl games skins are the best skins for any of the gacha games genshin impact included and how do i say that and how do i know this right whether waves doesn't have any skins well you just look at pgr look at punishing gray raven punishing gray raven skins are really 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 good they have the best skins in my opinion they have the best skins um uh uh and honestly all the gacha games like they're very dynamic they're very unique they change the way the character they change the way how a character feels because of they change not because they are not only do they change the way the character looks, but they change some of the animations, the effects and sound effects, a lot of things. Like there are dynamic skins, not just recolors. You know what I mean? And the reason why I'm putting in so much emphasis on the skins is because because this when a, when uh when the when the gacha game makes a lot of money on the skins, it allows them to be more generous with the game, right? Like if you've noticed right if you've noticed anytime there's a video talking shit about some gacha game about how they're stingy like let's use genshin impact for example right if there's a video talking about how stingy genshin impact is there's always somebody in the comments being like wow i play pgr i can't relate i get everyone i want and to a degree they're right P P punishing great raven is a very generous gacha game i remember there was a point where i was like how the fuck do they make money because Every character you you can you can quite literally get every character you want and get Punch of Raven for free. You just have to play the game a lot, but you really can get everyone you want for free because they do a lot of reruns, right? They rerun every character. Like if you miss a character, right? Unless they're like a collaboration character. Like right now they're doing a collab with Black Rock Shooter, and I don't know if she's ever gonna come back. So that's probably that's probably like the only FOMO. But like if you miss a if you miss a character's banner, right? you're good because in like a month or two they're good they, like the way punishing Raven has two different banners right you have like the standard you have the standard limited character banner that you roll for and then there's another banner where they have three different characters that you can roll for and um with uh i think like a 70 percent chance that you're gonna get them so even if you do miss a character you you can still like in like a month or two you're gonna be able to get them again so you really can't get everyone you want for free in a uh, punishing raven so the point is so if plus the punishing raven is very generous with the amount of stuff that they give you right with the amount of like uh pull currency that they give you right so the question becomes how the f well how the fuck did they make so much money because punishing Ray raven still makes like bare minimum at least 1.5 mil to 2 mil every month so it's like how do they still make so much money it's through skins they, they make their money through skins, which allows them to be more generous with the stuff that they give you, right? So if Punish, so if Wuthering Waves were to release, start releasing skins for all the characters and the skins are good and people buy them and, um, you know, they, they make a, a good amount of revenue from the skins alone, that can allow them to be more generous with the stuff that they give to the player through pull currency, through, um, you know, characters. I mean, like, like, like in the span of like, what, like four months? In the span of in the span of the game's lifespan, Wuthering Waves has given out more five-star characters than Genshin Impact has in its entire in its entire lifespan. It's in, like it's wild. Like it's given out. It, no, 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 not even just Genshin Impact. Genshin like Wuthering Waves has given out more five-star characters, more like five-star like premium characters than Wuthering than uh, Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact combined. Like Genshin Impact hasn't like, like what Genshin Impact gave, what gave out Aloy. Which is let's be real, that's a fucking four star. Even Al, I say even like Al, if three star characters exist, I'd say Alo is a fucking three star. And then Honkai Saro gave out Doctor Ratio, and then that was it. That was that's essentially it. And you know, like you know, I'm not shitting on Honkai Saro. Like they gave out Doctor Ratio, he was a premium character, he's good. So that's all good. I'm not saying that it wasn't good. 
but they've just given out so much already to the point where it's like yeah you kind of say it's almost like you want to support them like as much as as much oh, i mean not like almost like you want to but what i mean like you almost want to support them it's like, it's like you almost want to like spend your money on the gamble, gamble for them you know what i mean it's like you know the one rule that like a lot of these content creators have is don't spend money on these gacha games right just spend within your means be responsible don't be crazy but it's like what is so like passionate and uh giving with their game it's almost like damn I wanna, I wanna get copies of a character because I know I, I don't feel any FOMO. Like there's already no FOMO in Weather Waves that much, anyways. But it's like with the release of skins and if they make that much money on skins, if they recoup, if they recoup losses from people not pulling on characters through skins, that that will allow them to be more generous with their stuff, right? And and the reason why I can say the full confidence is because it is Curl Games. I couldn't say that with Genshin Impact. I couldn't say like if Genshin Impact released skins and they made a lot of money from the skins, I don't think Genshin Impact would be any. I still think Genshin Impact would be stingy as fuck. But I can say that with Curl Games because Curl Games has shown us that like you know like what matters to us is if you like the game, and we will compensate you for that if you like our game. And the Curl Games have shown time and time again that that's that's what they do. That's what they. That's how they want to handle their game. Right. So that's the biggest, that's like the biggest reason, right? Another reason that's being bouncing around in my head as to why I get you back, to, or not get you back, why Weathering Waste has so much potential is um, combat, right? Now, Weathering Waste combat being good is no secret. It's no, nothing new, nothing special. What I'm saying is nothing new. But I do think Weathering Waste combat has more potential than uh, even Zenless Zone Zero. I think Weathering Waste combat has the most room for imagination because it has the least restrictions in in uh, the game. Now, what do I mean by this? When you look at Genshin Impact, right? It's restricted by too many things. It has no stun lock. Uh, you have the elemental reactions, which is the biggest determining factor of damage in the game, right? Which means if you're not using a, if you're not if if you're not if you're using superconduct over vaporize, you're just stupid because you're not using it. Vaporize just does more damage. You know what I mean? So it's like the elemental reactions severely hand, uh, handcuff uh, what you do with the characters, right? And then you have uh, uh, the different, the specific weapon types that, well, I mean, Weather Waves has the, has the weapon types as well. So I guess I can't really hold Genshin Impact to that. But the elemental reactions specifically are like the biggest handcuff to the game because those are the biggest determining, those are like the biggest. Uh, outputs of damage in the game which is the elemental reactions right which i do think is the biggest flaw and i think the elemental reactions should have been a nice side buff to uh, to the character's individual damage instead of the elemental reactions doing damage in and of itself right we have weathering waves right uh there's no elemental reactions uh but the the, the biggest thing about weathering waves about uh, the combat is the forte circuit right the forte circuit is essentially like a third passive skill that every character has which allows that third skill allows the most imagination and room for growth in all the characters we haven't really seen it that much because it's the beginning of the game but i'm thinking about all the possibilities that a character has uh for the forte circuit and like the things that will allow the things that characters can possibly do with the forte circuit be it exploration combat you know uh buffing debuffing all that stuff along with a regular skill with the basic attack it does allow for a lot of um room for imagination right and i kind of just had some dreams i had some dreams about camellia's uh uh camellia's uh kit and like her combat and uh yeah she's the first one where i'm just like yeah that really shows at least in my dream about that really shows about um the forte circuit and how how much different the characters can be through the forte circuit you know what i mean how unique the forte circuit can really make the characters be you know what i mean so that's really just been bouncing around in my head about what waves and like you know maybe i didn't explain it well uh this is just my thoughts on like why i think what waves like the point like the point that the biggest point i want to get home on what waves is don't give up on what don't give up it has the most potential it has passionate devs that give a fuck Wuthering waves 
mark my words 2.0 will be the make it or break it patch for welling waves and if they make it it will skyrocket if they break it then the game's officially dead <laughs> but i do think if handled correctly which i have full faith in curl games if handled correctly i do think welling waves will be the biggest gotcha game uh on the scene at the time i do think 